ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಹಾಚಾರ್ಯ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾ ನಮಃ ವೆ ಆರ್ ಬಿ ಸ್ಟಡಿಂಗ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದಿ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ದಿ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಮೂಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನರೇಂದ್ರನಾಥ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಎಸ್ಟಡೆ ಆನ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟರ್ಡೆ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ದಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಏಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ the heading is narendra's learning in the from the world and from master and in the first section which was most profound we found influenced by his father narendra became a free thinker and much given to western thought and his western education made him feel that it is the reason which can give me god and he went through all the western philosophy and find out at last in immanuel kant that we cannot by reason we by our mind we can never know the true nature of anything he accepted the good parts the science giving us so many apparatus for testing and the method of analysis and he thought that i will apply this on everything and i will not accept the conclusions of the western philosophy but i will apply these things on everything including shri ram krishna's strange experiences or which he had with shri ram krishna that was the one thing and finally he did not go totally towards atheism because he had already met shri ram krishna before he went into this western thought and he came across hamilton then who said that the end of philosophy is the beginning of religion and so narendra became more and more eager yearning to realize the absolute truth and shri ram krishna taught him that if you want to go beyond anthropomorphism then you believe in god so pray to god to reveal his real nature to you and remove all the forms which come to your mind this meditation gave much joy to narendra and he spent all nights into it and one day after meditation he saw which he says afterward that bhagwan buddha was coming to him and wanted to talk something but he suddenly became afraid and lost that chance that much we studied in the first section in the second section we saw his father putting him into learn the business of attorney and trying for his marriage but narendra strong objection and his father not getting the daughter in law of a choice was delaying that and thakur was going to narendra 
and telling about continence. And that was heard by his grandmother and she reported it to the all the house people. But they could not stop Narendra from going to the master because Narendra was a man of free will and he would not accept contrary result may come. So Narendra spent his time in seclusion, in studies and the practice of austerity and in frequenting the Kineshwar. Now, the fifth para I want to read again. <laughs> Narendra's own words as to how he spent his time with the master at the Kineshwar. So this is the situation of his mind. Now let us see. The sweet memory of the days Narendra spent with the master at the Kineshwar <laughs> during this period filled his mind with infinite joy throughout his life. He said it is difficult to explain to others how blissfully I spent my days with the master. This cannot be explained or communicated. This is for experiencing oneself and everybody experiencing like that. <clears throat> there is no limit to our astonishment when we think of how through play, merriment and other ordinary daily activities, he gave us high exalted spiritual education and molded our life without our knowledge. That is the best teacher. Through all the routine or playful activities, he is molding their character without their knowledge. Just as a powerful wrestler at the time of teaching a boy keeps his skill in reserve and displays only a part of his power as suits the purpose of teaching the boy, produces self-confidence in him, sometimes by defeating him seemingly with great effort and sometimes allowing himself to be defeated by him. So on many occasions, the master assumed that attitude in dealing with us at that time. He always saw a whole sea in a drop of water. So potentiality they could see. As they say, having had in ecstasy, the immediate knowledge of the fully developed tree laden with fruits and flowers which the seed of spirituality hidden in our hearts would assume in future through Samadhi. He saw. He would praise and encourage us in every way and at all times. So the seeing the potential he would praise always. And observing very carefully each of our actions, he kept us under restraint by giving us instruction lest we should get entangled among desires and fail to reach the fruition of our life. So very watchful. But we could not know at all that he observed us so minutely and controlled us so effectively. That was an extraordinary skill which the master displayed in teaching us and molding our lives. We felt that the mind, although getting a little concentrated at the time of meditation, could not dive deeper for want of a proper object. We asked him what we should do when he told us what he himself had done in similar circumstances and suggested various useful methods. As an example, he is telling, this is general about them all. When I sat for meditation during the last part of the night, the mind, I remember, became distracted and deflected from the object of meditation on account of the noise produced by the whistling sound of the juke mills of Alamada. During last part of the night. When I referred the matter to him, he advised me to concentrate my mind upon the sound of the whistle itself and I derived much benefit from that. On another occasion, I praised him of my difficulty in forgetting the body and concentrating the mind on the goal and sought his advice. He mentioned the words addressed to him by Sri Totapuri at the time of his sadhana of Vedantic Samadhi and sharply pierced my forehead between the eyebrows with the tip of his nail, saying, 
concentrate your mind upon that pain. Here I wanted to make a, a remark. <clears throat> Even in Totaripuri's prasanga also we saw. Here also it is clear. Totapuri taught master. Master taught Narendra. But that master himself practiced that has nowhere been mentioned. Neither there nor here. And here the idea is different. Totapuri wanted Sri Ramakrishna to bring his mind there. And that's why many people foolishly try to meditate there. In Narendra's case, the master wanted him to concentrate on the pain there. Concentrate your mind upon that pain. And actually I found that the pain produced by that cut could be kept uniformly in the mind as long as I like. And I completely forgot even the existence of all the other parts of the body. This is that Patanjali's dharana. Let alone the risk of the mind being distracted by them. The secluded Panchavati, the place of the master's sadhana, was very well suited for our meditation and other spiritual exercises. Because so much intensity is there. Why speak of spiritual exercises alone? We spent much time there in play and merriment also. But their spiritual vibration would catch them. At those times, the master too joined us as far as possible and added to our happiness. There we ran about, climbed trees and sitting in the swing formed by the Madhavi creeper as strong as cable, swung freely and merrily. And sometimes we picnic cooking our meals ourselves. So all this is leading to their spiritual growth in company with the master. Freedom. Give freedom and catch them by love. Seeing that I cooked with my own hand on the first day of the picnic, the master himself took that cooked rice and other preparations. So this caste for master depends upon the purity of the person. He follows caste for food and he breaks it also. I knew that he could not take cooked rice out of the hands of people other than Brahmins. I was going to arrange for him the offered food of the temple, but he prevented me from doing so and said, Nothing will happen to me if I take food cooked by a person of pure sattva like you. So that is Brahmin, pure sattva. I raised repeated objections, but he did take the rice cooked by me that day without paying attention to my remonstrations. So this he repeated for the importance. Now in the next param, Bhavanath is being introduced. Not for the sake of Bhavanath. A terrible incident will happen in Narendra's life, throwing him out of gear. And that is his father's sudden death. And that will produce a revolution in his mind also. And that will teach him many things, how the world behaves with him and how master behaves with him. So, Bhavanath is being introduced because he used to go to Bhavanath's house, that's all. <coughs> Bhavanath and Narendra's friends of Bharanath. So Bhavanath and other friends said Bharanath. <laughs> a devout person of pleasant looks named Bhavanath Chattopadhyaya had come to the master at Dakshineshwar some time previously, became acquainted with Narendra and contracted friendship with him. Bhavanath became dearer, dear to the master on account of his faith, devotion, humility and simplicity. Master does not go by his looks, he goes by these things. Faith, devotion, humility and simplicity. Seeing his tender nature, which was that of a woman, and his uncommon love for Narendra, the master sometimes said jokingly, you were perhaps the life companion of Narendra in a previous birth. Now in English, the gender does not come out of this word, life companion. In Bengali, Sangini. So, female life companion will have to add. 
life companion gives some sense because Narendra is a man, but it does not directly give that. Bhavanath lived at, so that is his nature, that's all. Perhaps you were like completely. Bhavanath lived at Baranagar. Well, you have to understand that Bhavanagar, Baranagar is a place between Calcutta and Dakineshwa. And whenever there was an opportunity, took Narendra to his house and fed him. Satkodi Lahiri. Now in English you cannot understand this. S A T K A R I. Some people put it Kori K O R I. We discuss this name sometimes. No. Sometimes what happens? The uh, children of your family does not live longer. So these peculiar names are kept. Kaudi is the smallest coin. Sat Kaudi is the name. Seven Kaudis. Lahiri is the surname. Bhavanath's neighbor was very well acquainted with Narendra. So he had friendship with him also acquainted and a Bhavanath's friend, and Dashrati Sanyal was Narendra's classmate and friend. So these people are living near about each other. Dashrati Sanyal, Narendra's classmate and friend, Satkodi Lahiri, Bhavanath's friend and known to Narendra, and Bhavanath, who has found a love for Narendra. They were all in Baranagar. <coughs> Whenever Narendra was available, they spent days and nights with him. So now and then, when on a visit to Dakshineshwar, or sometimes when specially invited by them, Narendra used to spend a few hours or a day or two with these Baranagar friends of his. So, so much free uh, from his house. He goes there and spends a day or two. At Baranagar, Narendra heard the news of the sudden death of his father. A great change came in the course of events in the life of Narendra early in the year 1884, sometime before the result of the BA examination was up. We have seen that in the Calcutta University, the final examinations were all in December. So, in January, the results have yet to come. His father Vishwanath had had a nervous breakdown some time previously on account of overwork. What is a nervous breakdown? No. Everybody must have had that, but uh, how huh. at the dick parish remain that with a vision at their cherry, it is poor way our son of the year. Sharir Avasanna Vyachilo. How we can translate it? Was feeling exhausted physically. Isn't it? Because nervous breakdown does not uh, relate to heart attack. Vishwanath had had physical 
Vishwanath had felt physical exhaustion on account of overwork. One night at about 10 p.m., he suddenly died of heart failure, which was most unexpected. He was a young person, full of vigor, and they are feeling exhausted. That is the only sign. And so the thing was very sudden. Invited by his Varanagar friends, Narendra had gone to them in the afternoon of that day and occupied himself in singing devotional songs till about 11 at night. That was Narendra. He then lay in the same room after taking his meal with them and was talking on different topics. His friend Hemali came in at about 2 a.m. and broke that terrible news to him. Because that to search for him, and they understood he might be in Varanagar, but to come from Calcutta after things in the house and started with him immediately for Calcutta. A deplorable change in Narendra's worldly circumstances. Because Narendra never cared, his father was supporting him financially. And like rich man, Narendra in a separate house. And so many things are there. Narendra returned home and performed the obsequies of his father. On making inquiries afterwards, he came to know that their worldly circumstances were extremely deplorable. Instead of leaving some property, his father had lived behind him only a day. Having spent more than what he had earned. Because he has seen his nature helping others without consideration. <laughs> their relatives had improved their worldly circumstances with the help of Narendra's father. And now, finding the opportunity turned inimical and even plotted to eject the family from their home. It might well be said that there was in fact no income for the family and yet five or six persons had somehow to be mentioned. Mother, Narendra, mother's mother and his sisters and brothers. Brothers especially. Brought up thoroughly in comfort and happiness, Narendra did not know what he should do and was going from place to place in search of a job. Now that attorney and all things, it will not be job is such. <laughs> when an unfavorable period occurs in one's life, even a hundred efforts on the part of one prove utterly futile. The time cycle is there like that. Man of Narendra's character, he is not finding a job. <laughs> Man of Narendra's character in the intellect and all, and then he is not finding a job. This Thakur takes something. It is Thakur's Leela. Many things will happen. But one thing is that Narendra will become acquainted with the condition of the world. Narendra met with frustration everywhere. The result might not have come, but he was a brilliant graduate of Calcutta and is not getting his job. Three or four months elapsed. One after another, after the death of his father, but the sky of Narendra's life was as overcast with dark clouds as ever, with no trace of a silver lining anywhere. Nor was there a distant gleam of hope of a bright future. That is called end of a tunnel. 
it is doubtful if he ever waded through such darkness again in his life. Talking of this period, he sent sometimes to us. So Narendra is describing himself. <coughs> Now, almost towards the end of this chapter, the full Narendra's description now. Narendra's description of that condition, search for a job, contempt shown by his rich acquaintances. I went about hither and thither in search of a job, even before the period of mourning was over. Because he saw then there is no money. Suffering from lack of food, I was going barefooted from office to office with an application for a job in my hand. In the blazing midday sun, no food in the stomach. Sympathizing with me in my sorrow, some of my very intimate friends would be with me some days, but on other days they could not be. But I was disappointed everywhere. From that very first worldly experience of mine, I felt keenly that selfish sympathy was very rare in this world. Selfish sympathy. I mean, you show sympathy when you are also expecting something. There was no place here for the weak and the poor. Those who deemed it a piece of good fortune to be able to help me only a day or two previously now found an opportunity to do the contrary and made a wry face at me. No. And although able, were reluctant to help me. Who helped him, you know, in those days? Most too much. Without his knowledge, you should send money order to his mother. We didn't calculate, you send money order. When I had such experiences, the world very often seemed to me to have been created by a demon. I was thinking David, <laughs> son David. In Hinduism, there is no David, no? One day at that time, when I was going from place to place in the sun, my soul, I remember, got blistered. Perhaps there was no food parents. Previously, she had without food in the stomach. I was going barefoot. Oh, barefoot. Uh -huh. Where I got that without the food? Or my wrong reading? Am I wrong reading? Huh? No. No, that word itself I had mistook. Yes. 
No, no, both are there, both are there. Suffering from lack of food. I was going barefooted from office to office with an application for a job in my hand. My soul, I remember, got blistered. Extremely fatigued, I had to sit down in the shed of the Akhtarlani monument in the Maidan. Big Maidan, only one place of shed, that monument. A friend or two were with me that day, or met me there by chance. One of them I remember distinctly sang by way of consoling me. Here blows the wind, the breath of Brahman is grace palpable. It's a Brahma sound. Bhaiche Krupa Gana Brahma Nishwasa Pavane Ityadi. And that hit Narendra very bad. When I heard the song, I felt as if he was inflicting severe blows on my head. Remembering the sheer helpless condition of my mother and brothers, <clears throat> I burst out in resentment, despair and disappointment. Shut up. Those who are in the lap of luxury and do not know what the pinch of hunger means and those whose nearest and dearest ones are not starving and going naked. To such people in the midst of the fullest enjoyment of life, such flights of imagination appear sweet and pleasing. That word little a rough word has come. Bengali grass acha dhanera wow, that's all. That word naked does not appear nice here. Another word grass acha dhanera is translated. Bengali says. Grasa Chadaner Avao Jahadigate Totona Saye or Nai. Previous to that, three four things he mentioned. The Bengali, three four things he mentioned. Bengali, the original. The whole sentence, if we read perhaps some other words are there. No, you see, Grand. Ne, ne, Chukkar. Shudhar Tadnay Jahadigir Atmi Sargate Kashta Paite Goyna Grasa Chadaner Avare Chadaner Grasa Chadaner The word naked is very bad. Yes. So the idea is there. Idea surely there. Grasa Chadaner. No, we should have better language. That is, in the absence of sustenance and covering. Does not make him naked immediately. Lack of clothing, see one way, may say. Yes, that will quite well. Lack of food and clothing. Grass achadanera. Suffering from want of food and clothes. To such people in the midst of the fullest enjoyment of life, such flights of imagination, that means the thing is the imagination, appear sweet and pleasing. I also had such days and felt similarly. But now, confronted with stern reality, 
all these sentiments seem to me a terrible mockery. So the word shield you remember. Sentiment, imagination, not that something real, Lord's pleasure, Lord's grace. Grinding poverty. Maybe the friend was highly offended to hear those words of mine. But how could he understand what a severe grinding poverty it was that had drawn these words out of my mouth? On leaving my bed in the morning and making secret inquiries, I found on some days that there was no food sufficient for all the householders. And as there was no money in my pocket, I went on telling mother, I went out telling mother, I have an invitation to lunch with a friend of mine. At least one person's food will be not required. During those occasions, on some days, I took very little food and on others went without any food at all. So that others might have their will. I was too proud to speak out these things to anyone in the family or outside. He did not tell anybody that he was suffering. Abhimane, Abhimane, Ghare Bahire, Karo Nikato Ekata Prakash Kurita Parita. Rich friends took me to their houses or gardens now as before and requested me to add to their pleasure with music, etc. Unable to avoid them, I sometimes went with them. But you won't say that I have no money. And I entertained them, but I did not feel inclined to express to them the feeling in my mind. They too never made inquiries of their own accord. A rare few of them asked me affectionately now and then, why do you look so dejected and weak today? Please tell us that. One only came to know of my condition from others without my knowledge and sending money to my mother with anonymous letter, not money order, eh? So then money order you have to write from that I was thinking. A letter in that money you would give and send it. And no name in that letter. from time to time, has put me under an eternal debt. It is somewhere it is revealed, it is Master Mahesh. <laughs> Master Mahesh knew from inquiry from others. He saw his face and all that. Temptation by women. So every type of circumstances he has undergone, then he has known the reality of the world. Knowing of my poverty, some of those boyhood friends of mine who had lost their character in youth and were earning some money by dishonest means found now an opportunity and tried to drag me into their company. Join us, we'll earn money by some bad means. Those among them, however, who had met with a sudden change of circumstances like me, and adopted detestable means of earning their livelihood, actually felt I found pain for my sake. So sympathy and pain they are feeling. 
but their method is using wrong methods. Character. Mahamaya too did not lag behind. She also found it a good opportunity to tempt me. A wealthy woman who had an evil design on me for a long time. Thinking that it was an opportune moment, she sent word proposing that I might accept her property with herself and put an end to her, my poverty. She had to be rejected with bitter contempt and sternness. When another woman came to allure me in that way, I said to her, I am my child, how innumerable, are, how innumerable are the deeds you perpetrated so long for the satisfaction of this worldly body of yours? Death is very near at hand. Have you made any provision for that time? Give up low-mindedness and call on the Divine Lord. So two women have tried. His mother scolded him for repeating the name of God. That was the ultimate breaking point. In spite of all my trials, my faith in the existence of God did not vanish. So long for all that pain and misery. Nor did I doubt that God is good. I used to wake up from sleep in the morning, remember the Lord and leave my bed think, taking his name. God is good. Circumstances are what? Then with firm determination and hope, I used to go from place to place in search of some means of earning money. One day I was leaving my bed as usual, calling on the Lord, when my mother heard my words from the adjacent room and suddenly said, Stop, lad. You have been constantly repeating the name of the Divine Lord ever since your childhood, and your Divine Lord has left nothing undone. The words hurt me terribly. From mother, she has learned to agree with devotion. Cut to the quick, I pondered, does God actually exist? If so, that means a devout person has felt like that, na? so that has affected him. If so, does he hear the plenty of prayer of man? Who is there then? Why is there then no response to so much of prayer which I pro proffer to him? When says so much of evil in the creation of a benign creator? So generalizing the same thing. Why is there so much of calamity in the kingdom of one who is all bliss? Vidyasagar, pained at the suffering of others, asked himself at one time, why if God were all goodness and all bliss? Lakhs of people fell into terrible jaws of famine and died for want of a morsel of rice. That query resounded in my ears with the reverberation of the bitterest mockery. <laughs> my heart was pierced through by a feeling of wounded love. Wounded love. That means I love God and He is giving me this. And doubts in the existence of God ascended me. <laughs> Here the next one is atheism due to the wounded feeling. In Bengali, it will be growth of atheism due to wounded feeling. Because atheism did not come actually, it is growing. It was against my nature to do something and conceal it from others. His poverty is concealing. 
Never from my childhood could I conceal, out of fear or from any other motive, even the least shade of thought, let alone my actions. Was it therefore surprising that I should now go aggressively forward to prove to the people that God did not exist? And even if it did, there was no need to call on him. For it was futile to do so. Consequently, a rumor soon spread that I had become an atheist and was mixing with people of bad character and did not shrink from drinking and even from frequenting houses of ill fame. Such rumors spread. Consequently, my heart, which had never been too docile from childhood, became steeled all the more on account of that false gun. Even unasked, I was publicly telling one and all that not only had I no objection to anybody's drinking wine or going to a brother with a view to forgetting his hard lot in the world for, of pain and misery, if he could feel happy there, why? <coughs> but that I would myself do likewise the very day I was perfectly convinced of becoming happy for a moment like this by doing so. And I would not retract my steps or fear of anybody. Both places, if All the devotees believed in Narendra's fall. All the devotees. But the master remained unmoved. So that is the thing which conquered Narendra terribly. And so much rumor, master knows him. News travels from year to year. It did not take long for these words of mine to go variously distorted and reach the master's ears at the Kinesh and those of his devotees in Calcutta. Some came to see me with a view to ascertaining their real state. I was in. And they let me know by their hints and suggestions that they were ready to believe something at least, if not all of what they had heard. On knowing that they could regard me so low, I became terribly wounded at heart and proved that it was a great weakness to believe in God for fear of being punished. And quoting Hume, Mill, Bain, Comte and other Western philosophers, I started a fierce argumentation with them to prove that there was no evidence of the existence of God. Consequently, they went away as I came to know afterwards, far more convinced of my fault than ever before. I was happy to know that. And I thought that the master would hear of it from them and would perhaps believe it too. The moment this thought crossed my mind, my heart was filled with a tragic wounded feeling. I came to the conclusion that there was no harm if we did so, inasmuch as people's opinions, good and bad, were worth so little. People. Later, however, I was surprised to hear that the master had heard of it all from them, but had not expressed himself either way at first. But when afterwards Bhavanath wept and said to him, Sir, it was beyond even our dream that such would be Narendra's lot. The master excitedly said, Silence, you fellow. He, mother has told me, can never be such. If you mention it again to me, I will not be able to put up with your I will not see your mouth, he said. Your face. You say, sir. Narendra will not fall. 
So the supreme confidence, because he knows Narendra from inside. And he has tested why he has come and everything. And he knows these things have to give Narendra experience. Knowing unrest, knowing unrest. But of what avail was it to indulge in atheism on account of pride and egoism? The extraordinary experiences that I had from my childhood, more especially those I had read after my meeting the master, arose in bright colors in my mind the next moment, and I thought God certainly exists. And the means to realize him also certainly exists. Otherwise, what is life for? What is it worth? That is Narendra. His reasoning is, here he mentions one reason, why for life, if we cannot realize God. So means of realizing are there. In other place, he has said that I feel hunger. That means implication that there is food and it can go inside. And there is a way, mouth, by which it is good. Three things are by inference are proved because I feel like that. If there was hunger means desire for food. If there was no food, I would not have felt that. And if food not, could not be taken in, I would not have felt that. And had there been no mouth, then I could not have felt it. So, because I feel yearning for God, God exists, and He has kept a path for realization. This is not his reason. He says, what otherwise the life is worth? Swamiji calls it ignorant, vegetating life. That path has to be searched out, however. And that path has to be searched out. However great the pain and misery, the search might entail. So all this talk is talk only. That is due to his experiences from childhood and in company of master. Time glided by and the mind wavered and doubted and peace receded farther than ever. My worldly want showed no sign of abatement. Narendra gained peace on account of an extraordinary vision. All this leads to vision. <coughs> the rainy season followed this summer. Some months have, five, six months have. The same search for a job continued as before. One day, drenched in rain and having had no food for the whole day, I was returning home at night with tired legs and with my mind more weary than the body. The exhaustion was so great that unable to proceed a single step further, I lay like a log of wood on the open veranda of a nearby house. Open veranda. Chatal. Outside the house, there is a slab like that. We can, we should, we can have some better word for that. I am just now only putting a pencil mark there. I cannot say whether I lost consciousness altogether for some time. This means external consciousness is gone. But I remember that thoughts and pictures of various colors, one after another, arose and vanished of themselves in my mind. So layers of his mind are getting open. 
I had no power to drive them away or to concentrate on one particular thought. Physical strength is not there for that. I suddenly felt as if within my mind, many screens were raised one after another by some providential power and saw in the innermost recesses of my heart the solutions of the problems which so long had baffled my this why in the God's presence this and that and that. By saying, the solutions of the problems which so long had baffled my intellect and distracted my mind, the problems such as why there are malign forces in the creation of the benign. Where is the harmony between the stern justice and infinite mercy of God? In Vedanta, there is a lot of pressure on that. If God is just, our God is kind. Where is the harmony between the stern justice and the infinite mercy of God? I was beside myself with joy. Afterwards, when I resumed my walk home, I found that there was not an iota of fatigue in my body. So the mind has supplied in new vision. The fatigue in the body is gone. And that my mind was filled with infinite strength and peace. The day was then about to break. Throughout night, this is happening. This is, this is the turning point. Up to that, it went on, 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 on. I became absolutely indifferent to place or break. Uh, his resolve to become a monk. The master's extraordinary behavior with him at the Kineshwar. Taku did not allow him to leave the sansar at that time. I became absolutely indifferent to the praise or blame of the world and firmly convinced that I was not born to earn money serve the family and spend time in the worldly enjoyment like people in general, I was scarcely, I was secretly getting ready to deny the world like my grandfather. When the day for starting on my itinerary was fixed, I heard the news that the master would come to a devotee's house in Calcutta that day. I thought this was very good. I would see the Guru before I renounced home forever. As soon as I met the Master, he importunately said to me, you must come to Dakshinashar with me today. I offered various excuses, but he was inexorable. I had to drive with him. There was not much talk in the carriage. After reaching the Kineshwar, I sat with others in his room for some time. When the master entered into ecstasy, in a moment he came suddenly to me and taking my hand in his, began singing as tears flow. Katha koite darai, na koite o darai, amar mone sandha buji tomai harai, harai. Harai means I lose you. Harai means or other. I am afraid to speak and I am equally afraid not to speak. The doubt rises in my mind lest I should lose you. Am um, I right? So Master knows everything.
at the master's request, he gave up his resolve of leaving home for good. I long kept by the surge of the strong emotions of my mind, but could no more check their force. If somebody is sympathizing, yes, for the first time. My breast too was flooded with tears, like that of the master. Master began singing its tears flow, taking my hand in his hand. So he also started weeping. I was quite sure that the master knew everything. All the others were astonished to see that behavior of power because sitting in everybody. Some asked the master the reason for this after he came back to the normal state. When he smiled and answered, it is something between ourselves. Afterwards, sending away all others, he called me to him at night and said, I know you have come to the world for mother's work. You can never live a worldly life. But remain in your family for my sake as well as I live. Some more experience. And we have to do Thakur's work, not go away like that. Saying so, the master immediately began shedding tears again with his voice choked with emotion. We did this. Om Sarva Dharma Stampaka Sam Sarva Dharma Sarupaka Acharyana Mahacharyo Ramakrishna Yate Namaha Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu. I have to tell you something. Eh? Yeah.